I'd like to uh, take the opportunity to, uh, uh, to introduce our next speaker, Greg Davis. He's the um, Associate Professor of Otolaryngology, uh, Head and Neck Surgery here at the University of Washington School of Medicine. He's the Director of Rhinology and Endoscopic Skull-Based Surgery. Hopefully, he'll explain all of that to you. Um, he joined the faculty uh, in uh, 2007 and was shortly thereafter awarded a very competitive K-12 uh, NIH grant, some of which uh, the work of he will be describing today. His areas of research include chronic rhinosinusitis, olfactory loss, cystic fibrosis-related sinusitis, and national trends in chronic sinusitis surgery and autism. He's a physician educator who teaches a number of national sinus surgery courses and provides advanced training in sinus surgery techniques. He did his medical degree here at the University of Washington and completed his residency here as well, and uh, then did a two-year clinical research fellowship and master's degree in public health as well. Uh, please join me. Welcome Dr. Greg Davis. Well, thank you for the opportunity to uh, tell a story tonight, and it's a fun story to tell. Uh, it's not just about sinus disease, uh, but let me tell you a little bit about this. So I'm an otolaryngologist, which is an ear, nose, and throat surgeon. And what I tell a lot of people is I'm the end guy in ENT. So I don't do any ears or throats anymore, just sinus surgery, medical management of sinus and nose-related diseases. So one day, I was hanging out in my office, and a good friend of mine, Al Hillel, who is a laryngologist, he's the throat guy in ear, nose, and throat, he is a, a gentleman who is on faculty here at the UW, and he had been volunteering with the zoo for many, many years, probably 20, 25 years, and about every five or 10 years, the zoo will call Dr. Hillel and have an ear, nose, and throat type question. And I've always admired this. In Dr. Hillel's office, he has a picture of him examining a monkey, examining a lion's ear, looking for an ear infection, and I always thought that was pretty neat. So, when he called me one day and he said, Greg, I have this case for you that I need some help with. And this is a 35-year-old male with chronic sinus disease. And I'm thinking, all right, it's kind of my run of the mill. It's what I do. He says, well, we have to take a field trip to get there. <laughs> and, and this is one of my favorite places in Seattle. Um, I grew up in Seattle. My wife and I took our kids there uh, all the time. And through the dreary winters, we used to spend a lot of time in the nice warm avian house at the Woodland Park Zoo. So I was very excited to go back. And they told me I would be meeting a gorilla. And not just a gorilla, a 430 pound Western silverback gorilla named VIP. VIP stands for a very important primate. And he is. <laughs> He's the alpha male of his family. And he is a father, he is nurturing, uh, but he's the alpha male. And when you go to meet VIP, it's a little bit intimidating. Um, <laughs> there's cautionary tales such as make sure you sit down lower than he is on a little stool, don't make eye contact, <laughs> speak in a soft, low voice. So I was already terrified before I got there. <laughs> and, and then they um, told me a little bit more about him. And VIP had been suffering from a sinus infection. And as you can see from this picture, it's a little hard to tell, but if we zoom in, you can see some purulence or some pus draining out of his left nostril. And, and the, the vets, headed by Dr. Darren Collins here at my left, and he'll be speaking in a little bit, uh, they did an absolutely fantastic job taking care of VIP. I don't know if any of you have ever had a sinus infection. My guess is most of you have. But they took the extra step to actually slide a culture swab into Vip's nose and figure out what the pathogen was, what the uh, antibiotic was best to treat that pathogen or bacteria was with. And very impressive. And if we could put on the volume from the computer, that would be fantastic. So this is myself and Dr. Hillel sitting down in <laughs> the behind the scenes area of the gorilla house. And this is Vip. It's a little hard to tell, but this is gorilla noise right here. And it's a happy noise, from what I'm told. There are different times where he would express his anxiety or frustration or dominance, uh, but not at this first interaction. And he was really nice to us. He uh, let us get up nice and close. And now this has gone on for a few months, probably I think three or four months at this point in time. 
And compared to the picture before, now you can see the pus is draining out of both nostrils. So the infection is getting worse. And as I said, Dr. Collins and Dr. Helmick, the two veterinarians at the Woodland Park Zoo, excellent care. They took the time to take a culture to deliver antibiotic culture-directed therapy, meaning they tested that bacteria against a bunch of different antibiotics to figure out what the best one is to treat VIP with. And first time, he grew up Bacteroides and Moraxella, two pretty common pathogens for sinus disease. They treated him with the right antibiotic, but it continued. Then he grew out Enterobacter, and they changed antibiotics and added some steroids, and finally grew out E. coli. E. coli is a gut pathogen. Um, he does eat his own feces from time to time, and so it kind of makes you wonder why that happened, but there you go. Uh, so we came in, and, and Dr. Hillel and I visited the zoo, and, and I, as we gathered with the animal health team and the gorilla keepers, I said, if this was a human, we would give them a few weeks of culture-directed antibiotic therapy with a fluoroquinolone like Cipro, some steroids to decrease the inflammation inside the sinus cavities, and then saline irrigations, like a neti pot. Many of you have probably done that. And in this close room, I, I suggested, I, and I said, so do you guys think you could do saline irrigations with him? <laughs> and the room got very quiet. <laughs> and then one of the gorilla keepers said, how about you try it first? <laughs> so I adjusted the treatment plan. And that's actually should be a cross out, not an underline. Um, unfortunately, Vip's condition took a pretty dramatic change within about a week of that. And uh, so the next step was to tr really try to figure out what is going on. We knew he had a sinus infection, but we were certainly concerned that it might have been a tumor at the same time. One of the zoo's board of directors, Dr. Dr. Robert Liddell, is a radiologist. And so he generously donates his time and his radiology suite to the zoo. And from time to time, they will get CAT scans and MRIs of different zoo animals. So by traffic police escort and zoo ambulance, they took VIP from the zoo under general anesthesia to the Center for Diagnostic Imaging close to Northgate Mall. And it was quite an impressive sight. Uh, this is a picture of VIP on the CT scanner. So he's on his back. He has the breathing tube in his airway. So he's under a general anesthesia. And he's 425 pounds. And the maximum weight limit of the CT scan is right about 400. So it, it was hit or miss. It took a while to get the CT scan, but with Dr. Liddell's expertise, we did. Uh, and this is a picture of the first time I really thoroughly examined VIP. And in my right hand, I have a rigid endoscope, which we commonly put in the nose to take a look around inside the nasal cavities and the sinuses. And you can see over my right shoulder, Dr. Collins is taking a look. And as I went through these pictures, I thought, you know, Dr. Collins, he's really, he, and he certainly is very concerned about the animals. And then when you look at this, I think he's more concerned about what I'm doing to his priceless gorilla, and appropriately so. It is, these gorillas are amazing creatures, and, and this is not something normally done. Um, but I'm thankful for his trust to allow me to examine him because it taught me some important lessons that later play out, and I'll explain shortly. I was able to get a culture from this that uh, did show E. coli and, and gave us an idea of what best to treat him with. Uh, the CT scan was obtained and it shows his sinuses. This is a coronal CT scan that shows his maxillary sinuses right behind the cheekbones and frontal sinuses, kind of right in the forehead area. And if we compare that uh, to another shot that shows this deep frontal bar across the gorilla, and that's kind of what gives him that stern look. Then we compare it with humans. And this is a human sinus CT scan with opacification or disease within the frontal sinuses. If we go a little bit further back or posterior, we'll see the ethmoid sinuses in the gorilla. And then further back are the sphenoid sinuses, right smack in the middle of the head. It's really interesting to take a further look at this, and you see this large vertical sagittal crest that these massive muscles, uh, temporalis muscles attached to it and allow for their mastication. If you compare that to the human, you can see, and this is relatively proportional, you can see the size of our brain compared to the size of their brain, and it's quite impressive. But the neat thing is we have the same structure of sinuses. Here are the sphenoid sinuses, right here in the gorilla and over here in the humans. If we look at us uh, further back, this is VIP now, and again, he got very sick, and this shows some erosion of his skull. So there's areas where the sinus infection, or at this point, we we're actually worried about a tumor, had started to eat through the maxillary sinuses into the soft tissues of the face. So he was getting progressively sick 
despite outstanding medical care. This is a picture of Kiki, a gorilla that uh, passed away at the zoo several years ago. And we used it to help learn the anatomy. When you look at a heads-on view and compare it to a human skull, it's fascinating, the similarities you see here. We both have inferior turbinates. These are long tube-like structures that warm and humidify the air. And we even have deviated septums or twisted septums, just like gorillas do. So I thought that was fascinating. And the size proportions are fairly similar. After the CT scan, we started the antibiotics. He continued to get worse. And then the decision was made when he became pretty critical, uh, really cut back on his eating and his interactions with the other gorillas. The decision was made that we had to operate. And this is the operating room at the Woodland Park Zoo. It's an OR just like here at the UW Medical Center. The only difference is it's not supplied with high-tech sinus endoscopy instruments that we use. So through very generous corporate donations, um, we could not have done this without these corporations. And there is a definite link between us and these industries that support education for us and education for other surgeons. And that's important because there was another sinus course going on in Seattle this weekend, and we were able to use those instruments on VIP because we can use cadaver instruments, which are just as high quality high tech on animals, but we cannot use human equipment on animals because of the risk of zoonoses and then use that equipment back on humans. So uh, we were able to do the surgery. Uh, one of the fun things is I use something called image guidance, which is just like the GPS for your car. I load the CAT scan into a special machine in my operating room, and it tracks where the tip of my instrument is inside the head at all times. This is something I do fairly routinely in humans. I've never operated on a gorilla before. As far as we know, no one has ever operated on a gorilla sinus before. And so switching species, this is a critical piece of information that I needed to do a safer surgery. So we cha uh, changed the OR into this high-tech endoscopy suite. And this is Dr. Helmick. She has a laryngoscope in her left hand, and in her right hand, she's using a endotracheal tube to intubate VIP, and that's to put a breathing tube in. And Dr. Collins' back is to us. Harmony, the vet tech, is right behind her, and she delivered uh, the anesthesia along with Dr. Helmick during the surgery. So here's a fun challenge. When I was at the CT scan, I was trying to put my rigid instrument inside his nose. And it's tough because his nose is very floppy. And as you can see from this video, you can literally stretch his nose about two inches up and down, up and down. And that was important to know ahead of time so that I could use some special tubes called the spyway to help protect his nostrils. We set up for the surgery, just like every surgery I do here at UW Medical Center. And it looks exactly like you would see in the ORs down on the second floor here. The only difference is when you look further down, you see things like gorilla feet <laughs> and gorilla hands. And what this picture can't show is the gorilla smell. That <laughs> is impressive. Um, it, it's a very almost acidic, skunk-like, apocrine smell that you will never forget. Um, I don't know if it's an attractant to female gorillas or if it's used as a warning mechanism, um, but I don't think there's any way VIP could sneak up on you in, in the wild. <laughs> and I don't think he would ever want to sneak up on you either. I, he's that type of guy that would just come and say hi. Uh, Dr. Collins was there throughout the entire surgery and uh, so much concerned with um, the health of, Z of VIP, and we were in constant communication throughout the surgery explaining what each other was doing from the, the side of giving the general anesthesia, keeping him asleep, and then my surgical plan. This is a, a couple uh, 30 seconds of video from in surgery, and so if your stomach's a little queasy, you might not want to look. It's not that bad, though, but I'm biased. This is what I do every day. Uh, so this is looking at setting up the image guidance system. That's VIP on his back, and this is what it looks like looking through an endoscope. So I'm holding a camera in my left hand, and I'm looking at a TV screen, seeing exactly what you see. And this is the thick infection inside VIP's sinuses that I'm cleaning out with suction and different instruments. This is the spyway to protect his nostrils. And he's very inflamed. This is a very challenging surgery compared to most sinus surgeries I do. He had a lot of polyps or these growths in the back related to the inflammation. And he hadn't taken a breath through his nose in several months because of the polyps. Once those were taken out, I could get to the back of his throat and his airway was now intact. 
This is now over on the right side, and I'm pointing to his middle turbinate. He had polyps, just like humans can have polyps from time to time, and this is removing the polyp. And surgery went very well and according to plan, and then there was a point in time where Dr. Helmick said, we're gonna have to lighten him up now, and you can see his nostrils flaring. And that's when I knew it was time to get out of there. <laughs> Quickly. So I put in this, uh, this nice new uh, steroid releasing stent, and it delivered steroids to decrease the inflammation right to that tissue. I did that on both sides. And then at the end, this is him as he's, oh, that, that's uh, the audio, I uh, forgot that was on, and uh, kind of just parting ways with him, and this is uh, the whole gorilla team waiting out in the, in the foyer, uh, waiting for VIP to come out, and just the caring nature of the gorilla keepers, it's, it's, it's exactly the same as when you go to the waiting room after surgery and you talk to a family, seeing their eyes, they uh, were clearly in a lot of anticipation for his surgery. He did very well uh, waking up from anesthesia, a, a tough thing to do for a gorilla. And these are the kind of signs you see when you go to the gorilla house behind the scenes that, uh, again, <laughs> increase my heart rate a little bit. Um, this is the backside of the gorilla house. And post-op day one, he was doing great. His facial swelling had dramatically improved. Uh, he was eating. No, this is not me hand feeding him grapes. <laughs> Uh, I did hand feed him longer fruit and vegetables, but not the, not the, not the little ones. This is him walking around and, and just very, very pleased with how he's doing right now. So we're kind of high-fiving each other and, and feeling good about things. And then post-operative day three, I get a call from Dr. Helmick. Something's wrong. Vip's not doing well. And his facial swelling had dramatically came back. He started to develop purulent drainage from a fistula that developed in his neck as well as from his eye socket. And it was quite an impressive infection. When the culture and sensitivity results came back, it showed that there was a different antibiotic that might be better, and so we put him on that antibiotic in consultation with, this is Dr. Collins and Dr. Helmick discussing it. And it, what I really appreciate is they took time to ask me what I thought as well, and it, it, and it truly was just this wonderful, not only friendship, but but teamwork that developed from this. Um, the gorilla keepers hand fed him for days, uh, gave him drink. The animal health team gave him intramuscular antibiotics to keep him going because he wasn't eating or drinking at this point in time. This is a picture of him and, and just to show how severe his infection was draining out of his right eye socket and what would a gorilla do? That's what VIP does. <laughs> so this, the upside of him fistulizing this soft tissue infection that had spread out of his sinuses is that he got better. And from a human surgeon standpoint, I was ready to rush back to the operating room and clean it out. And Dr. Collins, with his wisdom and his understanding of gorilla physiology, they have such, he, he educated me, they have such amazing immune systems to survive, he said, just let's be patient and see how he does, and sure enough, he did great. The fistula uh, started to close up. He um, made dramatic improvement in his eating and behavior, and this is the fistula in his neck a few days after it opened up, and then this is about two weeks later, and it just closed up on his own. About post-op day five, I was on vacation this week, uh, the first day that I did surgery, and then was on vacation, and I was scheduled to go check on VIP with Dr. Collins, uh, but I was out horseback riding with my family for a, a vacation thing, and I didn't have time to go home and change, and so I came to the zoo, parked, and, and went in my horse clothes and went to check on VIP. And that's important, I think, because when I went in to see VIP, again, he had been pretty sick. He ran up to the cage and pounded on the cage, which is what he did before surgery, and I was very relieved that he was showing emotion and kind of excitement. And then he threw a bunch of straw at me, and I started to laugh, and I said, hey, Vip, nice to see you, too. And then instantly, I was covered with hot, sticky gorilla poop. <laughs> so this is how Vip thanked his sinus surgeon. <laughs> and that was the end of the visit. <laughs> so after this, I, I wipe off, and then I head back to the car where my wife and two kids were waiting for me. And I said, does anything smell funny? <laughs> and my wife says, no, but you have something in your ear. <laughs> and I had missed a spot. 
So uh, that was really the last of the bad side of it. And this is two weeks later. He's eating. His facial edema had gone down. And he was doing really, really well. Um, about, uh, oh, and also during this time, I, again, I visited him all the time. Not to check on him, like I was really doing anything. But I had formed such a bond with Dr. Collins, the animal health team, the gorilla keepers, and VIP. I just liked going there. And I got to do things like feed him monkey chow, which is these little nuggets here, and then organic fruits and vegetables. Um, and this is a picture that the zoo took uh, probably about six weeks, I believe, or so afterwards. Uh, the purulence had drained, and then he had went back to uh, being outside in his normal exhibit at the zoo. He had a fractured canine, and this happened in an altercation. And all along, the animal health care team was planning on taking him back to the, the operating room for a general anesthesia so the oral surgeons could take a look at him. And I wanted to take a second look. This is something we often do in clinic in human patients after sinus surgery. I numb up the nose with some spray and slide an endoscope in and clean out some of the residual infection and, and some of the residual crusting that might be present. VIP wasn't going to hold still for me, and I wasn't going to try. So when he was going back under general anesthesia, that gave us an opportunity to check things out. The uh, photo on the right shows his fractured lower canine. And uh, this is a picture of the oral surgeons taking a look at him. Dr. Collins is there, as always. And then intraoperatively, we're just going to take a quick look into his left nostril. Again, this was the more diseased, or more diseased sinus. And you can see there still is some sinus infection present. It's uh, not nearly as bad as what it was, and it cleaned out nice and easily. On the right side, it looks healthy. This is great. This is sucking out gorilla snot. So not too many people get to do that. It was a good day for me. Uh, and then we finished things up with his surgery there. In November, he was doing fantastic. He was walking around outside and behaving like VIP. And then uh, about a few days before Christmas, I got one of the best Christmas presents ever. I got this email from Dr. Collins. And this, is, this picture is important because this is VIP hanging out in his, uh, in his sleeping quarters in the gorilla house, and there are fire hoses hanging from the ceiling. And Dr. Collins says in his email, VIP was having gorilla friendly relations with one of the females while climbing on the fire hoses last week. The aerial copulations on the suspended fire hose is a great indicator of how well he is feeling these days. It doesn't get any better for a male gorilla. So that made my day. And uh, my day and VIP's day couldn't have been possible without a ton of people who donated their time. This was all donation from everybody, including my surgical team, one of my resident surgeons, Dr. Bake, who came and assisted me, my circulating nurse, my scrub tech, and many people here at UW Medicine, including Dean Ramsey, who helped out. Uh, the animal health team, led by Dr. Collins, also known as Vet One at the Woodland Park Zoo, is absolutely fantastic. The gorilla keepers, they practically live there. They consider the gorillas their family, and taking care of them is just like taking care of humans. It was truly an amazing experience. Um, Dr. Liddell started this all by being able to get a good picture of a CT scan. I don't think a CT scan of a gorilla has ever been done, and now we're documenting that so others can learn from it. Um, a lot of people contributed to the pictures I showed, and then again, the corporate uh, sponsorship couldn't have uh, done the surgery without it. So. I want to thank you for your time, and, and the final thing, when I give this talk to other ear, nose, and throat surgeons, I say, go volunteer. Give your time at the zoo, and some have, um, but what you can do, you can go to the zoo, visit VIP. There's often a volunteer out there, and you can ask them to point out VIP. He's pretty shy and hangs out in back or along the side, um, but they'll show you him. And, and then if there is an opportunity to donate to the zoo, this is uh, Laura Baumwalls, uh, and she's here today. Laura, can you raise your hand just to say hi? Uh, this is her contact information if uh, you're curious. But what I've learned from working with the animals is all the conservation they do, not just to preserve the gorillas and all the animals at the zoo, but the incredible outreach that they do throughout the world, from uh, buying and preserving natural habitat to sponsoring scientists to go out into the field and study these magnificent animals to help learn more about them and us in the long run. Uh, so it's been a life-changing opportunity for me. I'm now back to doing just human sinus work. Um, and I got to say, it's a little boring compared to gorilla sinus surgery. Um, but we'll see what happens in the future. So 
I'd like now to introduce uh, one of my very good friends, Dr. Darren Collins, who is Vet One at Woodland Park Zoo. Dr. Collins. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Hi, everybody. I'm Darren. I'm Vet One, as Dr. Davis said. I'd like to thank Dr. Davis and his team of really compassionate, caring, and expert um, technicians and doctors who came and helped our patient. And thank you to the University of Washington for loaning Dr. Davis to us for what ended up being a happy ending, but it was a nightmare the whole way through it. And if you can imagine being responsible for immobilizing a 450-pound gorilla and keeping him alive, keeping him alive in the back of a truck, going to Northgate Mall and back, and, <laughs> and then again at the zoo so this guy could stick all these instruments into his head and do it for like two hours, and, and then he wants to do it again, you know. <laughs> I was exhausted. All of us were exhausted, but VIP hung in there, and a, a true testimony to the, the spirit and the, the nature of working with wild animals who are amazing patients. I have the opportunity and the privilege of being one of their veterinarians, <clears throat> but I can't do it all. We can't do it all. We have to call in consultants on a routine basis, I talked to a veterinary cardiologist to come and ultrasound a penguin next week. So there's a limit to what we can do, and we can't do a complete job without our, our consultants and their expertise. And um, when the time came for a bill from Dr. Davis, there was no bill. So he did this all free of charge, and we couldn't have done it without him. As you can imagine, you heard Dr. Davis say he wasn't breathing through his nose. This case, in the wild or without intervention, such as what we were able to provide, would have ended his life. And ended, I see it also, as his opportunity to extend his species. He is a real stud gorilla. <laughs> he is a gorilla's gorilla. He really serves a purpose where others fall short. And we, as much as anything, we kept him reproductively active. And when he was copulating on the fire hoses, I told the keeper, I said, go scrape some of that sperm off the fire hose, because we really want to know if this has impacted his fertility or not. But he uh, continues to breed his females, and someday, he might have an offspring, and if it's a male, we might call it Greg or Gregor. Or <laughs> so, something like that. So if you're not a member of the zoo, I uh, encourage you to become a member. Come often, bring your friends, and you can actually, on your smartphone, download a Zubiquity or a One Health uh, type tour, and you can uh, hear the stories of some of the other animal patients that really remind you that we are an animal also. So thank you, Dr. Davis. Thank you, University of Washington, and thank you for your attention. <laughs>